Harbinger of Woe is the fourth full-length album from Brodekin. This is a Knoxville, Tennessee-based band, and uh, mostly centered around two brothers who are sort of the, the, the lead there, and they've gone through about three drummers over the course of four albums. Uh, most of their discography took place between 1998 and 2004. They did split up in, I believe, 2008, and then reformed in 2015 uh, with a, a new drummer after, after that. Uh, so the first two records are most related from this band, and their their demo sort of lined up this uh, early New York death metal influence sound that had maybe a little bit of Texas death metal in there too, very much centered around groove metal, uh, grind death grind, and the brutal death metal of the time. So there's a, sort of a classic touch to everything that they've done, but it's very much focused on that almost uh, slamming style. Uh, but it's this is their own thing, and I think that uh, if you're walking into Harbinger of Woe expecting the sound of those first two records, you're missing a key uh, piece of their sound and their style, which is was really further developed on their third record. That was their point of finessing it. That was their point of uh, kind of breaking out and getting more noticed. And I think if you missed the context of being there in 2004 when that third record came out, you're missing maybe... Uh, how they've continued on that line with Harbinger of Woe, a very focused and just kind of deadpan album that we'll, uh, we'll cut into a clip here just to get a sense of if you're already familiar with their brutal death metal sound, you'll understand how this is kind of an old school thing. It's kind of their own thing. And uh, it's really a tangent that, they ne that never stops developing over the course of this record. <laughs> So kind of in the way that the return of devourment recontextualized a lot of what they'd done in the past and kind of gave us a more serious sense of, of who the band was and, and what they'd how they developed over the period of time where they'd been absent. You do see that Brodekin is both much more focused, much more, uh, I guess, produced better. There's there's much more skill involved and all that. But like I was saying before, uh, methods of execution was that point of finesse. And I think that, well, it's, it's a funny thing coming coming from such a brutal band, but here we could always consider what they do technical in the sense that it is quite difficult and based on a lot of speed and precision, but methods of execution sort of had not so much a technical thing, but just an impressive, brutal act. And I think they, they continue on the, those lines here with this record 20 years later pretty well. Uh, they'd hinted at this as much with a 2 e two song ep back in 2021 and basically the entire record just sounds like that i think there's something like 10 songs here they're all very much cut from the same cloth they're built from the same dna and uh you'll find that they're kind of hitting the same parts of the guitar they're sort of hitting the same uh uh, cadence on a lot of these songs there it's all meant to kind of just burst together for about 30 i think 32 minutes or so so in that sense this is very much a classic underground brutal death metal album and not one that messes around with a lot of pacing or anything else in that sense there is kind of this disgorge like feeling to it but there's also kind of a thrashing vibrancy to this. This is a very aggressive and, uh, but still not uh, full on guttural basement level stuff. This does feel like there's a, a step up in some sense. So production values are actually pretty sharp. Uh, the big thing about this band and kind of the meme back in the early 2000s was the, the ping of their snare. And really there was plenty of other bands who exaggerated that sound quite a bit more. I never really got why this band got so much guff for that the snare on the second album overall the thing is that this band are known for being ridiculously brutal and i feel like they kind of force themselves into that box here by just getting out a very brief and aggressive statement that is just packed with riffs and i'm not complaining actually this it's the one of the things i like the most about this record is that it just cuts to the riffs it just makes it all about that and uh if you're the type who became a fan of bands like Brodekin for their drumming. This drummer in particular is just fantastic. They've always had uh, class drummers, but I think that he stands out quite a bit for just the, again, the finesse of it all. 
and uh, brutality isn't all about kind of being a, a total caveman about it. There's a lot of work that goes into a lot of the patternation of those drums, and it's something to really obsess over if you're a fan of that. So it's just kind of a cool record to rip through. Again, it's pretty short. It's not too demanding. For me, this is a high recommendation, one of the higher recommendations of March. Uh, not the most impressive month overall this year, but I think that this stands out for just being energetic, aggressive. It really uh, reaffirms everything that Brodekin have been about for so long and uh, again I'm just a fan of that style I think there's a few things that will bring me back to brutal death metal these days because it's been so played out in a lot of different directions but when we're when we're sticking to the basics and doing them as 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 well as possible and keeping the statements succinct i think you're in a, a, a world-class statement there you're in a, a very high standard so uh, i had a lot of just a lot of fun listening to this record and found it very effective in general so a high recommendation for me again uh, go ahead and check that out it is out now today march 22nd and uh, read the review if you'd like more of my thoughts